Jeff, tell me about the time you got on the very first kind of structured workout program ever. Man, this is rough. Um, I paid somebody to train me, right? I went to a personal trainer before I was just going to the gym and doing whatever, like legs. I just go like a hop on the leg press. I do like leg extensions and, and leave like like girls, all, all machines, right? Why not? How old are you? It's probably 21 at the time. This is like your first exposure. This is, this is me because I was an athlete before I was playing hockey. So I, I had some structured stuff, but it wasn't, I didn't really understand what I was doing. And I'm just like, I'm a kid. I'm pretty typical doing stuff. Right. I had the same story. Yeah. So I didn't want to train like that because I wanted to get big. Right. And uh, in hockey, we don't, we're training explosion, right. We're doing a lot of speed stuff. We're not gaining muscle. Right. A lot of these guys do that in the off season. Uh, who are actually big in the NHL. Um, but anyway, I wanted to get big and I wanted to get into bodybuilding. So again, I started doing all of that, just machine stuff. I wanted to get it dialed in. And I went and I got a personal trainer that was a bodybuilder. He's IFBB pro. He had his own gym. Um, why well, shit you not? The first workout I had was like a Superman set, like 30 reps on 30 reps on 30 reps, drop sets, like fucking dude, you'd be angled forward doing lap pull downs. You come to this angle, you got 30 reps on this arm, 30 reps on this arm, dude, giant set. And I'm like, what the fuck? Were you not I, annihilated? I was sore for weeks. I'm, I'm working out with these guys. Like this is their workout. Right. These guys are fucking monsters. 270, 280 yeah. Pro- pros on steroids. Right. Yeah. And so like, dude, I went down the steroid route because right. he's like, dude, this is how you got to get big, bro. And right. I'm like, what the fuck, dude. Yeah, you're going to do whatever the guy, the guy says. You got think on. this is the right way. Dude, thought it was the right way. Got on. Uh, I was on for like a year straight. Didn't, wasn't taught how to come off. Mm-hmm. Had a horrible time when I came off. I lost every, all the muscle that I luckily gained training that way. Um, I started going back, doing my own research. I looked into five by fives really trying to build my strength, my mechanics. I started working smarter. I was very weak uh, coming off of the steroids. And for a year and a half, I just felt like crap. Slowly started to see some muscle gain. And uh, I really got into the science uh, periodization, Mm -hmm. learning how to program, getting into other people's programs that actually know what they're doing, Uh, just following them, not changing them, seeing what I liked about them, what I didn't like, what what changed for me, what didn't. Oh, my shoulders actually grow faster than my chest. I can do less like less volume for my shoulders, yada, yada, yada. And just kind of gaining an awareness that took years to have to figure out. Yeah, that I think what you described there while it might sound very foreign to a lot of people it's probably there's quite a few people that would be listening that actually went down that that exact same route like they're 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 they think they're doing all the things they need to do in order to achieve that goal they go to the person that looks the part that talks the part that maybe they aspire to look like you know and in the end it's just all kinds of fucked up and then you end up spending more money more time more aggravation trying to unfuck yourself and you know, you took it upon yourself to to do your own learning. But I see people, they jump from that right into the fire, frying pan with another thing, right? Like, well, that didn't work and I don't want to work out with that person. So they jump into something else that's equally as poor. It's not individualized. It, ha- it, it, it does not support them as a human, as an individual at all. And they wind up in, in bigger trouble and ultimately discouraged. And, and I, it's just like this vicious vicious cycle. I mean, we see that a lot of red dot people coming in after going through this vicious cycle. It's happening a little bit less now. Uh, I think people are a little bit more informed, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's too foreign probably to some people, man. No, I was, I was there with Josh, Josh, Josh. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Josh. 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 That's where I met him actually. Yeah. yeah. I, wasn't Zach there too? Zach, Zach was there Zach too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It was uh, some of our best guys uh-huh. ever, man. Yeah. Miss it those was, dudes. Yeah. yeah. So it was a good time. It, it was a good time over there. Don't get me wrong. Like, we right. had a great time, made some friends, but uh, the training and the, uh, the health, it's it, just, poor. It, it wasn't there. And uh, it just led me down a rabbit hole of, you know, I need to eat so much calories and just shove it down, drink it with water. These whole mindsets of uh, just really messed myself up. Did you do bodybuilding or physique? I never got on stage. I okay. will not. I would never <laughs> wear those little underwear. You are <laughs> tripping, dude. Uh, that's not to take Fair away enough. from any bodybuilders out there. Fair I respect enough. you guys. Fair you guys enough. work you hard, but like, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not getting up there and sh- and doing all that. I need to get paid for that. <laughs> hey, you. Little, you know, show my show my glute striation. I need some money for that, dude. Yeah. Gotcha. I gotcha. I got some dollars. The gold. <laughs> Cece, what about you? 
Yeah. So um, when you were prefacing this, I was thinking about it and uh, I probably wasn't until my late 20s when I had any kind of structured strength training or any kind of programming. So, you know, um, I was raised in the Midwest. I went to high school in the Midwest in a very small town. And so all you did was you did your sport. And so I think there was a, a weight room at the high school of 80 students and it was in the boys locker room. So um, I never went down there. Um, those types of programs didn't exist where I was. I do remember playing basketball and doing conditioning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'd do some lunges and some, I think, burpees and these asinine sit-ups where our legs were on the stage and then the, then we would be laying upside down. Right. So our back was against the stage and then having to do sit-ups, like that type of stuff. But as far as... um having any kind of structured strength training, not until my mid twenties. And when I was um, in grad school, I remember training for a marathon. And so all I did was run, mm -hmm. run, 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 some cross training, and that was it. And I remember this stark difference of when I did that marathon training and when I actually did another marathon and I actually strength trained. So the very first marathon I ever did no strength training. And when I was done, my body hurt so bad. I couldn't even stand or move. And I was living in Tennessee. I did my first marathon in Chicago and the drive home was fucking miserable. <laughs> miserable. I don't remember, like my bones hurt like that deep. I just had so much pain. And then when I strength trained for my next marathon, which was years later, I, w I remember walking away thinking, wow, I feel so good. <laughs> so what are we going to do now? Yeah. You know, ready for the next one. What, yeah. what psycho yeah, goes we, back and does I it? Again? <laughs> I don't know what psycho does <laughs> oh, a marathon well, in the first place. Right. So there was a marathon and then there were Iron Man. Like, my bones really hurt. Let's do that again. <laughs> I, I'd never do an Iron Man without getting paid. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we go. It's all a, we all got our price. <laughs> yeah, marathons without getting paid. This is that doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. Yeah. But as far as having some kind of structured strength training program, it wasn't until my my late 20s. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And I did it myself, actually. I didn't pay somebody else to do it. Yeah. But at that so, point, you were been you're in the industry, in the industry, yeah. your education and whatnot to put you in a position. But ability still, to, let me tell you. So we're still trying. To my hurt. background, though, is athletic training. So dealing with the um, prevention, evaluation, assessment of injuries and then strength training somebody all the way back to full functionality and working with a, a strength coach, you know, um, with an athlete. But even then, um, you know, I don't think the whole application of strength training really came together for the, the whole body of an individual until later in life, because I was so focused on, you know, dealing with a single body part. And then, you know, how does this body part function above the chain, below the chain of as far as where the injury is occurring and all of that. So, um, and then I also had somebody to, to um, work with as far as a, a certified strength and conditioning coach with that athlete, besides just me doing the rehab component. So, as far as working with it, the whole individual, um, that wasn't until later. Right. Yeah. I think the, the uh, two very different experiences, but in along those experiences, you learn a ton, right? You learn what to do, what not to do. And you have to have those experiences. Um, have to, you have to, you, there's the failure and there's the frustration and then there's the pain, mm -hmm. right. That, that you experience along the way. There's the suffering that, you know, after your experience, it's a story of and, life. Yeah, it is, it's a story of but life. It, it's, a, it's, it's a character builder. And then it drives you to un, try to understand and be educated more for the next time. I had a much different experience. Actually. I, I, um, I, my, my dad bought my first weight set when I was, um, about 12 years old. We, we already had weights around the, the house. He had an old school Joe Weider set, still has them. Let's go. Yeah, man. It, Cause he, he had actually, he, he had been into weightlifting before lifting weights before more bodybuilding after some gymnastics or whatever. So he, he understood, you know, some of the basics at the time. And this was, he was doing this at the time where, you know, bodybuilding became very popular in the seventies, uh, late sixties, early seventies, the, 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 the Arnold Schwarzenegger era and, and whatnot. So it had become a little bit more normalized. It, you know, there was a little bit more information out there about it. 
and my dad is you know, meticulous about everything he does. He's an engineer. There's a lot of reading, a lot of education, at least from what he could get his hands on based on his background, which was not like human physiology or uh, biomechanics or anything like that. But but uh, really did some due diligence in trying to figure some stuff out. And he had some good results um, for himself. And so when we got this weight set when we were 12, I was like, okay, we're going to start working out together. Uh, I remember unpacking. I remember going to the store. It was a sporting goods store. We picked it up. We loaded it up in the back of the freaking the Oldsmobile Cutlass Cruiser station wagon with the fake wood on the yeah, side. Nice. <laughs> the ass into that station wagon because there was like 350 sure, pounds yeah. of weight plus the VAR in the back. We might have even bought like a an extra bench or something. We did have one of those at home. It's just dragging basically the whole way home. We got it. We unload it, unpack all the boxes and it's all this, you know, cheap China made stuff with the one inch uh, hole. Right. Uh, oh yeah. Just right. Yeah. The one, the so it's one inch round bar. So yeah. is what I'm saying. Right. So it's, uh, and you had these little tiny clamps that went on the end or the ones that you'd have to the tighten screw, with the wrench. The screw one. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. Where you would, everybody smashing their thumbs. If you ever had those, you've smashed your thumb on those before. So this is what the weights that look like. And when we opened it up, there was a package. It was basically uh, the package of, you know, what you got. The, so what was the contents of the boxes? But then there were these, there was this really archaic like exercise or like poster with exercises on it, like that you can do using your weights, whether it's dumbbell exercises, barbell exercises, all very basic movement patterns that you see happening every day in the gym. But it was all very brand new to me. And so my dad took that and then went back to what he had done, you know, when he had had some success and on graph paper, right, nice. had basically designed this program for me to do. Um, now, albeit going back, God bless my dad, to try to do the best he could. It's, it was pretty legit. I mean, but it was really a body spar, a body part split program, right? And uh, there was no formal, obviously, instruction on how I should be doing these exercises, just a basically a photocopied piece of paper sitting in front of me with what, you know, little dotted lines to kind of show the motion stick figures is effectively yeah. of what I should be doing. And that's how I got started. And the, the, I think there were benefits to that because it, it forced me to explore all these different movement patterns and it was more bodybuilding esque. Um, and I was in the garage, you know, by myself or sometimes with my dad very rarely, but mostly by myself and kind of figuring all this out. And I saw results. He was even taking measurements for me. It's like, let's measure, you know, mm -hmm. uh, let's, you know, let's take some circumference measurements. Let's, you know, we'll track your weights and at things 12? like that fucking 12 years old. And by the way, I wasn't, it wasn't like I was lifting crazy weights. I remember very, he, he was very specific about look, son, you know, like you, you do this too much. You could stunt your growth. I mean, that was kind oh, of, yeah, the, that was kind yeah, of the thing. Yeah. So we don't want to get, oh, he's very, he was very uh, good with me on that, on that end. So I, you know, I wasn't going crazy, but it did give me some structure um, right up until, you know, you find very quickly that it's not sustainable because there was just too much there for me. And I didn't have the capacity, you know, in order to keep up with the, the, the volume and the intensity that was in this program. And there wasn't a lot of control of that, right? Like it was just kind of random mm -hmm. in a sense. Guys, let's, let's talk about structuring your workout um, to see the maximum amount of gains. I mean, this is the question everybody wants the answers to, right? So if I'm going to work out, uh, if I'm, say, an intermediate or novice to intermediate exerciser, maybe intermediate to advanced exerciser, how do I structure these things? Obviously, the answer depends. But if we can um, break it down a little bit to maybe talk about more like, okay, so what's available to you in terms of amount of time, you know, frequency of days that you're going to be working out. Um, I think the average person, like if you look in the gym industry, the average person might work out two days a week at their gym, right? If they're signed up uh, the membership. Now the above average people are going to take advantage of that and they're going to go maybe five, six days a week. But let's say you had two, you were working out two to three days a week. We have that example, or we have the person that's maybe working out more like four to six days a week as an example, and look at kind of traditional sense of how to, you know, people, most people have broken out their workouts and you've sort of already suggested how that might happen, Jeff, from a bodybuilder perspective, how can we, how can we provide some guidance for people in terms of structuring their workouts throughout the week to maximize the result, let's call it gains that they may get over time. Let's start with a two to three day a week person. So, in general, how would you kind of break out a week, Cece? Um, for myself or for somebody else. So for, let's say, 
let's say I have a client. They come in and um, they want to work out three days a week. Um, I'm going to see them for an hour. That's about how long I'm going to have them. So based off of their history and all of that, I would probably have them go through of and what their goals are, um, probably full body workouts to maximize the time that I have with them and for them to get the most out of the workout. Um, as far as a caveat to that, depending on how they're recovering and what they're doing, I might then um, break up the workouts and maybe they don't do a full body workout um, during the week. They might actually do, you know, legs one day, a squat one day and a pull one day, followed by then a hinge and a push the next day. And then seeing how their body is, maybe something that's more full body, lighter loads, higher metabolic conditioning kind of a, of a workout versus um, more of a strength training kind of a workout. Yeah, clearly it depends, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, based on history, ability, uh, health, mm-hmm. all, of, all of those things. But what I think the major takeaways there were, if you're working out three days a week, doing a full body workout three days a week makes a lot of sense, right? And, and uh, again, it does depend. But if you had an hour in your example to get it done, which I think is reasonable for most people they can put in like an hour maybe an hour and 15 minutes they, there's probably a lot of question about how much benefit are you really getting beyond that amount of time if you're spending that much time in the gym um, putting together these full body workouts through the week and what i heard you say there was you're kind of contrasting pushing pulling hinging uh those kind Squatting. of things mm-hmm. so let's break that down a little bit so if you could kind of give us an example what might a workout look like um, let's just say it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday routine. Cause you've got this person three days a week. What might that look like on Monday versus what it looks like on Wednesday? So depending on the individual and where they are, um, and whether or not we're doing some type of explosive power work, we would tackle that first at the beginning of, of the workout. Um, and from there, then we would move into more of our compound strength training types of exercises. So let's just say it's a, it's a squat day and we're going to either do a barbell back squat. Um, and I would probably then set it with an upper body pull. So while their legs are resting and recovering, then I would hit the, the top part of, of their body. If we needed to do build sets for a back squat, we would do build sets for a back squat until we got into their working sets. Um, and then from there, we might go, let's say on a Wednesday we would focus on more of, of a hinge day. So if that's, you know, RDLs or deadlifts or something like that, working in some build sets to get to our, our working set and then setting that with an upper body push. The upper body push, it could be a, a vertical push or a horizontal push, depending on what it is that um, I, 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 I I have set for them for that day, what their goals are, how their body's feeling, how they did last week, um, because maybe I might save the upper body push. Um, yeah, vertical push for, for, for Friday. Friday. Yeah, for Friday, yeah. if they're a little sore, a little mm-hmm. fatigued. Yeah, so you're, you're, so there's a couple of things here, Jeff, and that is one was exercise selection, mm-hmm. right? And the, the, the ones that she's picking, she mentioned like if we're gonna involve some power training in this person's program, maybe they're ready for this, they've been prepped for this. Um, it's part of their program, part of their goals. We're hitting the power stuff up first, right? Like we're, we, we this have- This is when they're fresh. This is when their central nervous system is is fresh. Um, it's not taxed. And so when they're going to have the best form, when they're not fatigued, yeah. And to be able to create as much energy production at the beginning of a workout versus trying to add it in later in a workout. So you've kind of gone through this. That could be very individual, obviously, to the person. Not a lot of people are working power into their workouts. Um, those that are, there's a large percentage. I think they're doing it in a wild kind of way. It's a little confusing. We've talked about that on other podcasts. But um, you're going to get that stuff done up first for the reasons you said. Going back to exercise selection, Jeff, she kind of mentioned a few things about how she selects her exercises. And I'm wondering if maybe you could just sort of break down what the rationale there, because I know you operate much the same. Yeah. So like Cece was saying, I, I literally program the same way and I personally trained that same way for three years. Um, I saw the most muscle growth with the full body routine. Uh, it's really more about the f- training frequency, but when I'm picking exercises for me, it's like, I'm doing a squat and I'm doing a bench press push, some, some sort of push. And then everything else is going to be the rest of the body part. So what is the everything else? Let's so talk about that. I'm squatting, right. And I'm benching on the Monday. I'm going to come in and do an RDL, hit the, hit the hamstring, 
right? I'm going to go to my back, maybe do a lat pull down or a row. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do an overhead press or a side raise, rear delt, biceps, triceps, abs, get out. So the first two movements that you mentioned are kind of like your heavier loaded strength the movements. Primary. Those are your primary movements for the day. Depending right? on what phase I'm in. So if I'm in a strength phase, yeah, that might be a barbell squat. If I'm in like a strength endurance phase and I'm doing two exercises at the same time, it might be a Bulgarian split squat, supersetted with, you know, a lying uh, leg curl on the floor with a, what are those little furniture? Outside. The f- furniture movers, right? Oh yeah. Just anything, like, anything like that. So yeah, it's like, um, that's my main mover, but like, it's not always going to be the barbell squat. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. Totally get it. So you, but what you've chosen is a, a more of a fundamental, what most people would think of like a fundamental full, or excuse me, multi-joint compound, uh, compound movement. Biggest bang for the buck. Biggest yeah. bang for the buck. And for some people, maybe that's a leg press, right? Cause they're, they're overloading it. Mm-hmm. They're overloading themselves there before Love they move on press. to these other things, which could be considered accessories for the day. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So that would be like a Monday, mm-hmm. right? So what about Wednesday? And then Wednesday, like deadlifts, pull-ups from there, um, going into again, uh, some sort of push, like an incline push, and then coming right back down through the. So you're hitting all the other stuff. So it's like, you know, overhead press on one day, side, le- I'm doing side raises on one day, and then coming in. And it also depends on how much volume I'm doing. I might be doing two exercises per that body part, right? And this is where we start getting into volume. And the full body day might take some time once you get up there yeah. and, you know, well, a you, training age. And, and you build some capacity, right? Yeah. yeah, some of mine, an hour and a half. And it's, I'm not beat up by it, but it's just a lot of work on a lot of muscles. Right. Right. Because you're trying to get it all done in three days. Mm -hmm. And so what might the third day kind of look like then? So the third day for me is I'll do some sort of front squat, maybe a zercher. I'm loading the squat in a different pattern. Um, And then from there, it's really the accessories or little things that I want to add, maybe some more unilateral work, kind of a lighter day little less volume on that. And what I have my clients do is actually in between days, they're they're doing mobility, they're doing mm-hmm. light banded work to increase protein synthesis, right? Or spark and muscle frequency, Recovery. right? All, all of these things. So yeah, they might have a three day split, but they're doing active recovery things in between. So they might be moving six days, but I wouldn't call that a six day split, right? Because gotcha. they're not they're not creating muscle damage on one day. They're trying to focus on recovery. Yeah, it's the opposite. Exactly. Yeah, it's the opposite. They they're might be using exercises to do that, but you know, your threshold and my threshold will be different. I could use a band. You might be able to use a barbell, right, sure. and still recover. Sure. So yeah, we're trying to enhance the work that you did on those sort of those other three days. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. While focusing it's on an, nutrition, it's an amplifier. It's rest recovery. Uh, it's part of the recovery plan. And also, when we're looking at volume, it's the least amount of volume that can get you to grow. Correct. If I'm jumping 20 sets over what my threshold is, well, guess what? Now I got to push past that to get more growth. And I do I have that capacity? No, because I just jumped up so far from my baseline. Yeah. So we've talked about this in another podcast. We had Caleb in here one time, uh, for, uh, not too long ago. We were talking about the fatigue management model, mm-hmm. right? And you know, how much stimulus can you, can you reasonably give yourself to then actually benefit and recover from, Mm -hmm. right? And so when you're working in this three-day model, right, uh, two to three days a week model, it might mean your workouts go a little bit longer. Uh, It means you need to be managing those rest periods, as you were mentioning, and, you know, exercise selection that might be more of that kind of push-pull squat, you know, squat hinge uh, um, offset throughout the week to keep things stimulated, right? To be, Mm -hmm. to be driving the, the, sorry, sending the right signals to drive growth, but also making sure you're having enough time to recover from. And so again, you were, you, Cece was kind of alluding to this, that I have to be really cognizant of how my body is working through. It's not just going through a program because it's written down that way in the program. Cause maybe I need to offset this. Maybe my Friday becomes my Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I, I go, exactly. you know, Monday and Friday are my you know, my offsets between my squat and my hinge. Cause then I have the two days in between three, almost three days in between uh, the, so I got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to re- recover before I hit it again on Friday. And then I have the weekend mm-hmm. Saturday, Sunday to recover before I go back into my heavy squat or heavy hinge. These are individual things based on lifestyle, based on training age, based on your ability to recover. What's what may be going on in life. But I like those, that, that programming. I do the same thing for myself. You know, my program now lifting programs three days a week, max. Uh, I know that's what I can put in uh, and reasonably recover from and feel like I'm getting what I need from both the maintenance and 
still stimulate a little bit of change in the ways that I want to. And then that leaves me lots of room in between to make adjustments for certain times of the year. Again, you, you were talking about depends on what phase you're in. Like, all right, so the wet, the weather's getting a little bit warmer. I want to I want to feel a little tighter, you know, because uh, there's less layers and we're going out. To, I want less layers on my body and I also want to be wearing <laughs> less layers. Yes. Right? So, <laughs> so I might I might increase my I might increase my volume or my in my frequency of training in order to accommodate that goal or, or to achieve that goal, which then moves us into the next thing. So as we start to stack on days, so we talked about the two to three day a week versus like the four to six day a week plan. Mm -hmm. If you're working with somebody that's working out, you know, more, maybe like more four, four to six days a week, how do things change? What, what changes? Um, and again, I understand, and to preface this, it depends on what phase you're in, but we're talking about kind of like a, a basic strength training program, mm -hmm. which I think most people can relate to. How do things change? I'll start with you, CZ. So, you know, I would probably go, um, we'd be squatting two days a week and one day might be bilateral squatting. So where, you know, either the bars on your back or maybe you're front squatting or maybe you're using kettlebells or dumbbells or something Whatever, like that. Yeah. Yep. And then maybe the second day of squatting would be more of like um, a unilateral or a Bulgarian split squat or something like that. Or, you know, maybe um, depending on, on the situation, I might barbell back squat one day and then two days later, barbell front squat. Um, as far as then, you know, um, the rest of the days, then on my offset days, I would probably do a bilateral hinge day. So maybe deadlift, maybe RDL. And then the, the next hinge day, maybe I might do some walking lunges or maybe I might do some B stance or split stance, you know, RDLs, uh, dumbbell RDLs or something like that. Step ups, um, step downs, those types of things more. I guess you could consider some of them ancillary, uh, but they're still just as important because you're working on Correct. different aspects of the body, yet you're still getting a hinge. And, and you're, the, I think one of the important things to note here is you're using less load in those positions, mm -hmm. right? Or in those in those particular exercises. Your, your barbell front squat, back squat generally is going to be your heavier load. You're maybe mm -hmm. working lower rep schemes, uh, higher intensity, higher load, um, and versus those other exercises where be by virtue of the movement pattern, you are less loaded. Doesn't mean it's not more, it's not equally or more challenging. You're just, you're, you can't reasonably load it that much, mm -hmm. which then puts you in a position to recover and benefit by mm -hmm. the additional frequency of training that you're putting the, that muscle, muscle group through. Yeah. I mean, sometimes as you're saying too, as well, like that, that active recovery, like you're growing from that, you're not taking it to failure. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be sore. You don't need to take it to failure to have a to have growth. Right. So those things, they don't need to be an synonymous important point right there. Right. right? Yeah. They don't need to be synonymous because they'll be like, oh, dude, my ass is so sore. And it's like they so think that that's gonna, a good thing. Well, they think it's going to equate to growth. <laughs> right. And. I mean, I, I understand that it makes it makes sense. Oh, I it's feel valid. It validates like, the yeah. work that they're doing. Right. Oh, I'm sore. So it must be yeah. working. Right. But yeah. So for the four to six day person, I'm looking at kind of an upper lower split maybe a body part split depending on how um trained this individual is right if it's someone that's kind of a newbie or intermediate i'm going upper lower with them and same thing as cc said right we're multiple variations of squats multiple variations of hinges um it's about consistency and if i'm trying to build skill acquisition and i'm trying to get good at the squat hinge overhead press bench pull all these things i need to do them repetitively and i need to do them with intent proper movement. Right. And so don't get me wrong, two to three days a week, full body is fine. But if I can get you into the gym more and we can do these more and right. more, I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to get a better result. And yeah. I don't mean okay. more like volume more. I just mean getting in and getting your brain working around these skills. They're going to come become better at it's training. Yeah. Two to, know, two to three days a week is, is good. Four days is better. Five changer. days, five days, like game yeah. changer, yeah. right? Six to seven that can be very that there's, there's a lot of nuance there that could be maybe it's it is or it isn't beneficial for you but we start working up around four to five days a week of that that type of activity structure the way you two are mm -hmm. explaining it start to see some pretty great results well you know the other thing too that jeff said was you know um i think he said up upper body part splits i mean there's so so many variables that you can do with pushing and pulling um and if you structure it you can get your horizontal pushing and pulling and your vertical pushing and pulling. And um, I don't know if how many people actually think about pushing and pulling in those ways. 
Um, I think they, they go in and they think, and I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to do my, my horizontal push, 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 push. But yet they forget about the, the vertical push or the hor- horizontal um, pull, but they forget about the vertical pull. So um, there's there's so many things that you can do, to, ways to structure your workouts. Yeah, I think it, it, a lot of times going to, to your point there, it defaults to the old school body part split where they feel like they have to get it all done for that one, that one, you know, group of muscles in one day where mm-hmm. again, you go back to it's, it's chest and tries right on Monday and yep. then on Tuesday it's back and buys and shoulders and, you know, abs or whatever. And then, Ass and calves. And then it's, yeah, it's all, it's, it's that kind of a thing. So what you wind up doing is all your vertical pushing and, and uh, your horizontal pushing and fly movements and everything all in the same day trying to really overload that system. And then with the intention of resting it for another six to seven days before you hit it again. And we've covered that on this podcast before, um, you know, while that can be effective depending on, you know, where you are in your training age, how you're recovering, what PEDs you're using I was just and, <laughs> and, and, and all of that, then, then that, that might be the right plan for you. But I think if you, even if you look at like the top pro bodybuilders that are clearly you know, on all kinds of PEDs, they're recognizing and in, in, in their training programs, they're hitting stuff more than more than twice per week or more than once per week. They're hitting it at least two times. And depending on, again, the muscles and where their problem areas are, but they're very, very structured in the way they're handling that. So to your point, CC, it does depend and you have to, you have to structure it appropriately. But to your point, Jeff, it's that full body, that full body approach tends to work really well. It's really about the frequency that you're hitting those those particular muscle groups or areas throughout the week. So uh, on top of the volume. So go back to that whole, again, chest and tries days where I hit, I'm hitting three to four exercises for my chest. Well, what if I just hit two on one day and then a couple of days later I hit the other yeah. two mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at the end of the week, it still equates. Yep. Right. And again, we've talked about this at, 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 in depth with, with even with Caleb here about that. And I don't think a lot of people really think like that. Um, and if they if they have a program like the, that's sitting in front of them, I don't know that it's structured in a way that supports the again, the stimulus and recovery and the different movement patterns mm-hmm. uh, that allow you to continue this type of programming for the longer term, which I think is the bigger the bigger picture that maxing yourself out, you know, five days a week, chest and tries back and by shoulders at whatever that's that's on you're on a time clock. You sure. cannot continue you're to do that forever, gains. right? You're going to start to run into, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to start to slow down those gains because you're not hitting them frequently enough. You're in fact, you're overtrained and you're not recovering. So, you know, if you're thinking about, like you just said, I'm going to do like five pushing movements during that bodybuilding type. Well, if you have really weak stabilizers and you're going to, you know, you go through and let's say like you, after the first bench set, not set, but like the first exercise, your stabilizers are done and you're still able to like, you know, control the bar, but this is where you start getting into like impingement. You're not really controlling the shoulder blade as well, or, you know, it starts to get tired, right? You're not uh, trained. Uh, this is where we can start getting into those uh, impingement issues and being able to have, okay, I'm going to really focus on the bench press today, get that out of the way. And then I go on to the rest of my body. Uh, I've seen a lot more joint health and muscle growth from that because when I come in the next week and I'm like, oh, my biceps impinged and I can't press and I'm all pissed off and I can't, yep. I leave the gym early. Did I just... Right. Long, long, done then. The, yeah, longevity is a thing, right? And uh, I think at my advanced age, uh, I realize that now that making sure that you have a smart plan in front of you to structure your workouts and continue to get gains for the longer term uh, means you're going to have to do different things and you're going to have to uh, challenge your body in different ways. We've talked about the periodization um, concept how to put these things together. And maybe you are moving from, depending on your lifestyle, your job, things that are going on in life, you are moving from a three day a week to a five day a week program and then back to a three day a week program. And understanding how to do that for you, for yourself is extraordinarily important. 